This is the day the Lord has made. We have come to rejoice and be glad in it. Today we're going to be looking at a scripture out of <clears throat> the book of Romans. Romans, the 12th chapter, <clears throat> and the second verse. And it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And just for a few moments, to my A Street family and to those who watch, we're going to be talking about a spiritual attitude in a cruel world. Our relationship with Jesus Christ as believers should be our most prized possession. We all love our families and churches, and, and most of all, we should love Jesus Christ. He is our personal savior, and our relationship with him should be very personal. Nothing is more important than our relationship with Jesus. That's why some people can't understand us as Christian believers. They don't know that there is a priority, and oftentimes unseen, at work beneath the skin. That's why they can't shake us from church. They can't run us away from worship. They can't scare us from praising God. They can't roll their eyes when every now and then we want to lift our hands in praise. They don't understand that it's not the buildings or the church titles or the historical narratives. Our relationship is not even based upon what we what he gave us yesterday or what he's done for us in the past. As a matter of fact, God doesn't have to do another thing for us because we continue to love him. We continue to praise him. And we still love him in all the days of our lives. As a matter of fact, as believers, we should praise him until we can't speak anymore. I plan to lift up my hands until I can't lift them up anymore. And I plan to worship the Lord with everything that I have. So the question is today, is there such a thing that exists that can disturb the relationship that we have with God? In other words, since we can't stop praising God and we can't get anyone else to stop us from praising God and stop us from worshiping the Lord there's so nobody should be here or in even in our midst that has the kind of power over us that will interrupt our relationship with Jesus Christ and I've come to suggest that Satan and his demons are out there and in some cases, they are even in our churches, working on a plan to interfere with our relationship with Jesus Christ. They want us to stop that relationship between us and Christ. And if we're going to prepare for what I believe, I have to prepare myself for assaults from Satan. It's not the stuff on the outside that messes us up. It's not the clothing that messes us up. It's not the kind of Bible that we use that messes us up. But it's the kind of stuff that is down in our spiritual closet. We now allow me to rename it for a moment. The closet of our mind that needs rearranging. The mind is what Satan is really after. And if Satan can get into your head and into your mind, he'll have you in a spiritual paralysis all year long. 
He'll have you living beneath your spiritual privilege. He'll have you confused all year long. And if you just get into your spiritual closet, if he can just get into that closet, the mind, and after all that God has done for us, and after all the progress that we have made spiritually, he will stain that progress. He will stifle your progress. He will sink, try to sink your progress. You see, my brothers and sisters, it's time for a renewal. It's time for us to realize that what we do for the Lord is the only thing that really counts. We have to understand that when we change our mind, we can change our world. And this is going to be a difficult step for the world that we live in because we don't really want a mind renewal. We're too busy <clears throat> improving our personal appearance. But the mind needs some rebuilding. It needs some rebuilding right now. And when we were kids, we had company over to play with. The first place thing we did is that we didn't want nobody else to see all of the stuff that we had laying around the house or even the, the junk that we had. And we threw it in the closet and it stayed in that closet for months at a time. Remember the junk in the closet. You know, I want us to go with the Apostle Paul who is writing to the Christians at Rome. And let's see what he recommends concerning the mind. Are you interested? Paul is writing spiritual advice to spiritual people. And previously in this chapter, Paul says that you need to present your body as a living sacrifice wholly ac acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. <clears throat> then Paul moves on to the area of the mind and says that if you want to have a clean closet, you've got some things you need to do. He opens up by saying, be not conformed to this world. And Paul says that if you want to dirty up your closet, let conformity to this world be found in your mind. This is going to hurt. There should be a distinction between your walk before you came to Christ and the walk that you have right now. Don't get excited about the world's standards and what makes them happy. I'm not ready to lay down to their standards. I'm not ready to go down to some of the styles of clothing that we see today. I'm not ready to get, for example, my eyebrows pierced and my nose pierced and lips pierced and tongue pierced and my chest pierced and my lower extremities pierced and my body tattooed. I'm not ready to be mad in the morning and grumpy in the afternoon and angry and aggressive at night. But back in the day, back in the day, some of us had no problems with going to parties. As a matter of fact, to tell the truth, we had a lot of fun there. But now that Jesus is our Lord and personal Savior, that pattern no longer fits. It doesn't get us excited anymore. Here's what gives our friends troubles with us. They can carry us to a party and we won't get excited at the party because it really doesn't move us like it used to. This is not a suggestion text. This is a command text. God wants you and me to be different from the world. And he's helped us in this process. And I'm so glad that I'm changed and that I am not what I used to be. I've been undergoing a process and since I came to Jesus and the benefit is that I'm no longer interested in conformity. Since I came to Jesus, my mind has been changed. 
Look at the way Paul puts it. He says, I have been transformed. In other words, when I met Jesus, he changed me inside and out. I may have the same look. I may have the same facial features. But in the spirit, I am completely changed. Old folks in church, when we were growing up, used to put it like this. I looked at my hands, and they looked new. I looked at my feet, and they did too. And I don't walk like I used to walk. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't hang out where I used to hang out. My mind, my attitude, the way I carry myself is cutting down some trees in the crowded wilderness of my mind. And even when Paul showed up after his conversion, the early church fathers were afraid of him, not because he didn't talk well about the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't his spirituality that they had an issue with. The problem was that he looked the same. And when people looked at each other, they looked the same. They expect the old behavior to come out of you because they remember the old you. And our change should not be a one-time effect. Our change should be progressive. Have you been changed? I've been changed. And I will be changed. And I want my change to be real and authentic. I have to change my mind. My mind needs some cleaning. Therefore, a renewing our mind renovation, which makes a person difficult and different, rather, than in the past. I'm not different because of what I look like now. I'm different because God has control of my mind, and he's got it and renewing it all the time. You see, the great thing about being changed is that other folks can see the change in me. The Lord can see the change in me, but I need to celebrate the change that God has made in me. Paul says that my change comes when I renew my mind. When a power plug and a power source are separated, nothing is accomplished. But when the power plug meets the power source, that is renewal. When a car and a car key are separated and you can't travel anywhere, but when the car meets the car key, that is renewal. When a set of drums are separated from a musician, no music can be produced. But when the drums meet a musician, that's renewal. When a recipe is separated from a cook, no food can be produced. But when the recipe meets the cook, that is renewal. And the reason I celebrate is because that when a soul is separated from King Jesus, Nothing can be done for the kingdom. But when the soul meets Jesus, there is renewal. And Paul emphasizes that renewal is the key to cleaning up your closet. When my life lines up with the Lord's will, that is renewal. When my life lines up with his purpose for me, that's renewal. When I fall in line spiritually with the Lord, and what he has for me, that's renewal. Renewal is not a process over and over and over again. It's renewing my life, and he can change your world. And I'm celebrating because for many years, I've been experiencing renewal. I was called to the ministry 25 years ago, and every day is a day of thanksgiving. Every day is another chance to walk like he wants me to walk. Every day is one more day of praise to him. Every day is another day to celebrate his goodness and his mercy. And every day is a day to say thank you 
for all that you've done. And every day is another day to give him the glory. And somebody ought to be listening and watching today and here to help me celebrate. Because when I come to celebrate, I'm celebrating that I was not a victim, but now I have a victory. I'm celebrating that the devil didn't kill me when he had the chance. I'm celebrating that my problems didn't drown me. I'm celebrating that my troubles didn't choke me. You need to celebrate the transformation of your mind. And he continues to destroy those old habits and old ways. He continues to pardon you. He continues to forgive the regretful part of your past. So we need to come and celebrate. Jesus gave us a blood transfusion on an old rugged cross. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And today we come to celebrate. He stayed in that tomb all Friday night and all day Saturday and Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, celebration took place because he got up with all power in his hands. And we all have had a Calvary experience because the blood still works. May God bless you. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, we come, Master, to thank you, Master, for renewing us. We thank you, Master, not only for renewing us, for changing our minds and changing our attitudes, especially in a world that continues to be cruel, in a world, Master, that changes from day to day. We ask, Master, that you continue to not only be with us, but we ask especially, Master, that you eliminate this dreaded virus that we're experiencing across the world. Father, we just ask that you please eliminate it. And Master, we ask not only eliminate that, but eliminate the, the hate that we see, that mankind and humanity might be able to love one another. And if not just love one another, but to show that they care because they indeed need to be instilled in them that they be, they be careful people with one another. We ask, Master, that you continue to be with us, continue to walk with us, give us a new walk, and give us a new talk. We ask it all in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen.